catering to the ambitions and dreams of a billion Indians and the bets of a trillion dollar digital economy, technology is more front and center than ever before. Talking us through the potential, the opportunity and our readiness, Anant Maheshwari, President of Microsoft India and Satya Nadella, Chairman and CEO of Microsoft. Hello, it's great to have you here. I'm delighted to welcome you to Future Ready. The two days of this event will help you accelerate the tech intensity for you and your business to empower the future. In the last two years, the world has shifted on its axis and India is no different. However, India's advantage is that it was already well on its way with digital and the two years of the pandemic have served to accelerate how India can play a leading role for the next normal of the planet. These three words are core to driving growth for India and for the world. Starting with being amongst the largest number of digitally connected people on the planet, India has now evolved to create the largest digital identity system. And that is now rapidly enabling billion scale digital platforms. A great example is how India is catapulting to lead the mobile payments innovation and scale for the planet. India's IT industry serves to accelerate digital capabilities across the world. The innovation in India is now accelerating through the third largest startup ecosystem. The entrepreneurial energy is just compounding. We are seeing the largest scale of unicorns being created at a pace that is unprecedented. What is dramatic now is the significant share of B2B players in the Indian startup ecosystem, indicating how India's software as a service or SaaS ecosystem is maturing. India's unique strength is its large developer population. Every company is digital and that is powered by software that is created by this ecosystem. Rapidly adding to it now is the low code and no code platforms that are democratizing digital asset creation. With the power of India's large young population that is natively connected and mobile, India can scale the creation of digital assets without necessarily knowing how to code software. The pandemic and the last two years have accelerated the leadership of tech in leading all industries. Health tech, fintech, tech for citizen services and gov tech, logistics tech, game tech and entertainment, edutech, and the list just goes on. These are mainstream tech trends in every industry. A digitally native customer is a trend line that will reshape all industries. It is estimated that India's consumer digital economy, which was pegged at a sizable 85 to 90 billion dollars in calendar year 2020, is now expected to become 10 times at more than $800 billion market by 2030. Microsoft is leading the innovation of deep industry tech intensity with the launch of the industry-focused clouds with the first five industry clouds already launched. At Microsoft, we believe in empowering everyone to do more. And we strive to make tech accessible to individuals and businesses. We focus on building an ecosystem approach to accelerate India's progress and are now the largest end-to-end -end ecosystem in India. We value partnerships with our customers and partners. While India has unprecedented digital momentum, it is important to put this in context of similar trend lines across the planet. Let's hear it from Satya on how businesses are increasingly becoming digital across the world by rapidly accelerating their tech intensity. Digital technology is a powerful deflationary force in an inflationary economy. Businesses, small and large, can improve their productivity as well as the affordability of their products and services by building tech intensity. But you don't come to these events just to hear about what happened or what is happening. 
You're asking what will happen in the next three to five to 10 years and what you need to do to prepare your organization. How you sell, how you support customers, how you market, how you manufacture, how you connect with your employees, it's all undergoing a sea change. Fundamentally, we're moving from a mobile and cloud era to an era of ubiquitous computing and ambient intelligence. An era which will experience more digitization over the next 10 years than the last 40. This conference is your opportunity to get a sense of what will happen over the next decade so that you can help your organization navigate this change and emerge stronger. This is both a tremendous opportunity and an enormous responsibility. So let's talk about the trends that are transforming every company. It starts with a new world of hybrid work. We are seeing change in how we work, when we work, and where our work gets done. More and more people are also asking that very fundamental question, why we work. This leads to two challenges that what we call the hybrid paradox and the great reshuffle. 70% of the employees want more flexible remote work options, and about the same number also say that they want more in-person connection. 58% of the people who expect to spend most and the least time in the office tell us they plan to do so for the very same reason, more focused work. More people are changing jobs than ever before. When it comes to hybrid work, there is no standard and flexibility will be key. Productivity and flexibility, though, are not mutually exclusive. Every organization needs a new digital fabric for collaboration that brings together both digital and physical spaces. They need to strengthen connections between employees and their company's mission, between employees and their managers, and empower employees to ensure their own well-being and exercise their flexibility without sacrificing any career advancement. For some time, we've been talking about hybrid work in the abstract, but now it's right at our doorstep, and the world won't be able to scale to this transition without all of you. The second trend is building a hyper-connected business. A sweeping business process transformation is underway. Over the past year and a half, we talked about how we had to pivot sales, customer service, manufacturing to be remote ready. Going forward, this will just be built in by design. When it comes to your suppliers, having supply chain resilience will be key. When it comes to your customers, having omni-channel reach and service will be paramount importance. We need that next level of real-time hyper-connectivity between businesses and between consumers and businesses where data and intelligence flow freely to tackle the challenges of supply and demand. In fact, by 2025, it's projected that sales and marketing processes will involve more proactive engagements than reactive ones, all the way from customer marketing to supply chain. Going forward, every business process will be collaborative, powered by data and AI, and will bridge the digital and physical worlds. The third trend is that every business is becoming a digital business and building your own digital capability will be of paramount importance. This requires that you have the best multi-cloud, multi-edge infrastructure. And it requires that you have the best tooling to support fusion teams across the organization who are working together to build new solutions. Computing is becoming distributed and embedded in the real world. And the application models are transforming rapidly to run on the edge with new ambient intelligent capabilities. The percentage of industrial control systems that will include analytics and AI inference capabilities at the edge will increase by six-fold in the next four years. And students and teachers, data analysts and scientists have all seen rapid growth on GitHub. Going forward, every organization will need a more distributed, more intelligent, more autonomous computing fabric, one that they can use to rapidly build, manage, and deploy applications anywhere. And they will need new tools that bring together both pro developers and domain experts. And the final trend is the need to protect everything with end-to-end -end security. 
Cybersecurity is the biggest threat to digital transformation today, and it's the number one risk facing every business going forward. If you think about the amount of change during the pandemic that our IT and cyber operations had to go through as every business process became remote, this complexity will only increase. Cybercrime is also costing economies more than $6 trillion each year, and that's expected to increase to $10 trillion by 2025. Every organization needs comprehensive tools across identity, security, compliance, privacy, as well as management. And they need a cross-platform multi-cloud, zero-trust architecture. The Microsoft Cloud was built for this next era. And it's what you're going to hear about over the next few days. Hybrid work, building interconnected businesses, and leading the digital wave in your industry is now critical for each one of us. The one big shift each one of us have seen is that the future of work is hybrid. We are no longer bound to traditional notions of space and time for how, when, and where we work. Microsoft's Work Trend Index showed the hybrid paradox clearly in India. Three-fourths, that is 74% of employees in India saying they want more flexible remote work options. While at the same time, 73% of them are also craving for more in-person time with their teams and colleagues. Every organization will uniquely reimagine itself for the hybrid work era. And all of us are collectively learning and innovating on how we will shape the future of work in India. The shift to hybrid work presents a rare opportunity to transform key business processes in very bold new ways. Cloud readiness, digital business processes, and a zero trust security architecture will be key enablers in adapting to the new hybrid work reality. As we continue the trend line of ubiquitous computing and ambient intelligence, we need to ensure that we drive tech intensity at scale for every individual and create a scalable talent engine for India's growth. Skilling is critical in bridging India's digital divide, placing India on the path to inclusive economic growth and preparing it for the future. We are supporting India's talent to thrive in a digital future. For example, Digi Saksham, our collaboration with the Ministry of Labor and Employment reflects Microsoft's commitment to bridge the digital equity gap and empower the youth of India to succeed in a digital economy. Digi Saksham initiative will start to equip more than one crore youth in rural and semi-urban areas in technical skills. Tech also needs to reach all corners of India's business community. A great example of transformation of small businesses with tech is Elastic Run's platform to empower grocery store owners in India's hinterland with its intelligent logistics and distribution network. Startups transforming the lives of neighborhood grocers in India's villages with cloud and AI. That is so inspiring. Tech is evolving as we evolve. And it is fascinating to look at what the future of empowerment looks like. Let's hear it from Satya. One thing underlying everything is how large-scale AI models are becoming platforms in their own right, creating that ambient intelligence all around us. This means that we are taking the AI breakthroughs and translating them into platforms for you to build upon, whether it's deploying intelligent agents to spend, speed up customer service or extracting insights from volumes of unstructured data. We have seen how Fortune 500 are using Azure to power their own most critical workloads. And we are innovating to expand the possibilities of the cloud and what cloud computing can do. Five years ago, here at Ignite, we shared with you the world's first AI supercomputer. And today, we have the most powerful AI supercomputer in the world, 
Customers are using this infrastructure to address these massive challenges. AMD, for example, used it to design the next generation processor with tens of billions of transistors on each chip. Researchers at the Eindhoven University of Technology in Netherlands have run large-scale simulations on the ANSYS cloud platform, which is hosted on Azure, to better understand how COVID-19 can be spread by aerosol particles in a highly populated area like a stadium. We also have built the fundamental software capabilities to build and train large-scale models. Just a few weeks ago, together with NVIDIA, we announced the Megatron Turing natural language generation model, the largest and the most powerful monolithic transformer model trained to date with 530 billion parameters. It offers unmatched accuracy across a very broad set of natural language tasks. And we've also trained Zcode, a multilingual model that combines several languages so that individual languages can learn from each other with much lower data requirements than ever before. And you will continue to see us take these incredible breakthroughs like these and turn them into new capabilities for our customers, whether it's speech transcription, speech translation in PowerPoint, or now 100 plus languages and dialects we support in Microsoft Translator. Our partner OpenAI has released GPT-3, which is a breakthrough natural language understanding and generation model. Over the past six months, we have taken the power of these models and made them available across our products, giving, for example, domain experts access to GPT-3 through Power Platform and assisting pro developers with coding through GitHub Copilot powered by OpenAI's Codex. And we are committed to turning the world's most powerful large-scale models ever built into platforms for you to meet the unique needs of your business. It's why today we are so excited to announce Azure OpenAI Service, a new Azure cognitive service that brings together the power of GPT-3 with enterprise capabilities of Azure. Let's go to Tranlay to share what this means in the context of WNBA. Thanks, Satya. I'm excited to show you how the new Azure OpenAI Service combines OpenAI's cutting edge innovation with the power of Azure. Azure OpenAI brings models like GPT-3 and Codex to Azure to help developers and content creators provide engaging experiences. Now let's take a look at a WNBA playoffs game to showcase how powerful and innovative Azure's OpenAI service really is. I'll start in Visual Studio Code with the GitHub Copilot plugin, which is an AI pair programmer powered by the OpenAI Codex model running on Azure. Copilot helps developers write code faster by converting natural language comments into actual code. Copilot can synthesize code by intelligently interpreting context across comments and the code itself, allowing developers to focus on high priority tasks. For some languages, we're already seeing about 30% of all newly written code being suggested by Copilot. And as a developer, you can then make the necessary adjustments to this code to make it your own. Here, I resize the video to fit the Surface Duo, then I can add this comment and Copilot will suggest the code to call to the REST endpoint and display the play-by-play -play and summaries. You can see how Azure OpenAI and GitHub Copilot helped create this app that shows live gameplay alongside commentary and a play-by-play -play visual. Next, let me show you how Azure OpenAI can create some snackable gameplay summaries for fans. The GPT-3 model trained on over 175 billion parameters can use its pattern recognition and generative capabilities to transform dense text into simplified summaries. Real-time commentary of the WNBA playoff game is being created by human announcers. Now let's see what OpenAI can do when asked to create succinct text summaries from the in-game announcer's play-by-play -play feed. OpenAI produced highly accurate, well-written summaries from real-time game commentary in mere seconds. And with integrated content moderation, content editors are now empowered to select the most appropriate summaries for their audiences, and organizations can be confident that they will be delivering appropriate and trustworthy content. And finally, the Azure OpenAI service can also generate sophisticated original content, assisting content creators to accelerate the production of creative assets. In this case, it is taking all these gameplay summaries generated for the first quarter and creating a summary of summaries to represent how the quarter played out in the form of a blog. Creators can use this to generate blogs, taglines, statistics, and more. When combined with fine-tuning capabilities, you can tailor the output to your specific needs. 
Azure OpenAI Service adds to the Azure Cognitive Services a set of powerful next-generation AI capabilities. We can't wait to see what you do with this exciting new service. Back to you, Satya. Thank you so much, Tran. That was just awesome. It's incredible to see the innovation here. And most importantly, how these models are becoming platforms for you to build upon and to transform your business. The other area that is truly changing is how the entire identity ecosystem is evolving to create a complete new trust fabric that spans organizational boundaries. In the physical world, identity has always been critical to establishing trust and driving commerce. In the digital world, this is even more important. Think about it. In our interconnected world, we don't just collaborate digitally within our own organization, but with our customers, partners, suppliers. All of the trends I've talked about today so far, whether it's the hybrid work, hyper-connected business, multi-cloud, multi-edge computing, or zero trust security, requires a boundaryless digital ecosystem where trust between different parties needs to be established in real time. We are building the identity system of the future, a connective network that enables people, organizations, apps, and even smart things to make real-time access decisions. It starts with Azure AD, which now extends beyond securing and managing access to also defining customer journeys and business collaboration with anyone. This trust fabric is what makes experiences like Teams Connect possible today. With Teams Connect powered by our identity platform, you can establish seamless, secure, and trusted collaboration across organizational boundaries in a matter of minutes instead of days or even weeks. People across multiple companies can easily collaborate as one extended team chatting, collaborating on files, scheduling meetings with the right access necessary to do their work. This is so critical. Take customer service swarming where you have to bring together people across the company and beyond to resolve a ticket. Or take supply chain, which is perhaps the most topical thing for any business today. Consider this example of how a manufacturer can use teams to work across all their partners and suppliers to mitigate a supply chain disruption by collaborating before, during, and after a meeting. A supply planner receives an alert in Dynamics 365 about a potential issue. From the team's channel, they can inform the team about the alert and kick off a joint risk mitigation effort. The channel is a shared channel that supports multiple external companies, and it's easy to add another person or team from an external company. Now, everyone across these companies can collaborate in a shared collaboration space conversing, sharing files securely, just as though they were in the same company. When the third party uploads and shares a file to the channel, the message which happens to be in Mandarin can even be translated in line. All stakeholders can open the document and co-author the brief. The document itself can be secured using Microsoft Information Protection and multi-factor auth. With real-time co-authoring now available on encrypted documents, users can be protected and productive at the same time. They can even at mention colleagues outside of their company to draw their attention to specific tasks. All of this rich collaboration across teams happens before they even have a meeting, and this all works from one seamless experience without anyone needing to swap tenants. The team can initiate a call directly from the shared channel. During the meeting, the call is recorded so that colleagues who couldn't attend are able to catch up asynchronously and interact with chat. And of course, collaboration powered by Teams is also about what you can do asynchronously after a meeting. Here, a senior manager views a task assigned in Microsoft Lists directly from Teams, making it easy to manage tasks across external teams. From the chat history, they can replay the recorded meeting to get fully caught up, and they can open the document to add their approval to complete the task. All of this illustrates the power of Teams as a platform that break down the barriers between organizations. And finally, as the digital and physical worlds come together, 
we are creating an entirely new platform layer, which is the metaverse. We're bringing people, places, and things together with the digital world in both the consumer space as well as in the enterprise. Take, for example, Dynamics 365 Connected Spaces, which we are announcing this morning. Connected Spaces provides a new perspective on the way people move and interact in physical spaces, whether it's a retail store or a factory, or even how organizations manage health and safety in a hybrid work environment. You can do analytics, you can get real-time insights, you can run simulations, you can automate routine tasks. And when we talk about the metaverse, we're describing both a new platform and a new application type, similar to how we talked about the web and websites in the early 90s. Across the Microsoft Cloud, from Azure IoT to Azure Digital Twins to Connected Spaces and Microsoft Mesh, we are building the Metaverse Intrinsics, the Metaverse platform for you to build upon. In a sense, the Metaverse enables us to embed computing into the real world and to embed the real world into computing, bringing real presence to any digital space. For years, we've talked about creating this digital representation of the world, but now we actually have the opportunity to go into that world and participate in it. What's most important is that we are able to bring our humanity with us and choose how we want to experience this world and who we want to interact with. I can't overstate how much of a breakthrough this is. It's no longer just looking at a camera view of a factory floor. You can be on the floor. It's no longer just video conferencing with colleagues. You can be with them in the same room. It's no longer just playing a game with friends. You can be in the game with them. We are taking these platform capabilities and building them into our own first party applications like Teams. Features like grid views, together more, and presenter mode in Teams mark the beginning of bringing 2D immersive experiences to collaboration. But human presence is the ultimate connection. When you and I can have a meeting where we are all present together without actually being physically present, that's the next big breakthrough. And we are approaching this thoughtfully because we have learned from similar transitions in the past. Mesh for Microsoft Teams will allow you to connect with presence and have a shared immersive experience directly in Teams. Let me now turn it over to Ellen Shook and Jason Warnke from Accenture to share how they plan to reimagine work with it. Thanks, Satya, and hi, everyone. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us, and welcome to Accenture's end floor. At Accenture, we have over 624,000 people serving clients in 120 countries. And critical to our ability to work seamlessly together is Microsoft Teams. We have turned our focus away from spaces and places to creating what we call omni-connected experiences. You're turning the structural change born of this moment into new opportunity. That's our purpose. It's not about us. It's about your passion, your imagination, your ingenuity, and what all of you can do with the technologies we build. That is incredible and so exciting. Ultimately, tech is truly about people and empowering them to do better. However, access to tech, or rather the lack of it, too showed up in challenging ways in the last two years. The cracks in our growth became sharper as we saw some of the most vulnerable people affected, low-income groups and women. It reiterated to me the power of tech in bridging social and economic gaps as well as fostering innovation. And I see a massive opportunity for us to work collaboratively to deliver inclusive growth for all. A great example of AI for good is how Seeds, a nonprofit company, is protecting vulnerable communities from the effects of climate change with AI. Armed with Microsoft's AI for Humanitarian Action grant, Seeds is using 
AI to save lives during disasters. COP26 in Glasgow showed to us the commitment of governments and organizations to focus on sustainability for the planet. We need to work collectively to commit skills, resources, and funding to tackle this challenge which our planet faces. Microsoft is committed to being carbon negative, water positive, and waste negative by 2030. We have deployed a billion dollars in a climate innovation fund to accelerate the development of carbon reduction and removal technologies that will help us and the world become carbon negative. The preview launch of Microsoft's Cloud for Sustainability is designed to provide near real-time visibility into emission metrics for organizations and help them manage sustainability goals and reduce their carbon emission and reach net zero. The Microsoft Sustainability Calculator helps track and analyze the estimated emissions through a Power BI dashboard. Before I wrap up, I want to share what ultimately is the most critical aspect to building a better future. It is the values and culture that we embrace and imbibe. Our culture and the quality of what we create hinges on recognizing we are better together. At Microsoft, we have landed on what is really, really important to us, a culture founded in a growth mindset. We truly moved from a know-it-all culture to a learn-it-all culture. And that has made all the difference. Critical to a growth mindset is recognizing that people are inherently different with their own unique personalities, flaws, passions, hopes, and dreams. But it is these different perspectives that help us all to achieve more. We expect each of us, no matter what our level, role, or function is, to play an active role in creating environments where people of a diverse background do their best work. And finally, the heart of digital transformation is trust. As creators, users, and advocates of technology, it is important for us to make careful choices so that tech ultimately translates into benefits and opportunities for all. It is important to remember that people will only use tech that they trust. Security is built in by design into all Microsoft products and services, enabling organizations to adopt a zero trust architecture. Trusted and secure tech is at the core of accelerating tech innovation in the country. And we are deeply invested in building a trusted tech ecosystem. We think of trust as comprising of these six elements, security, reliability, privacy, compliance, ethics, and transparency. At Microsoft, we always ask ourselves, not just what tech can do, but what it should do. We believe tech can and should be a force for good, and we are optimistic about the role innovation will have in improving the world and the lives of people everywhere. There is great responsibility in the promise of our mission. And by using our mission to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more as our North Star, we aim to inspire all to dream, to define, and to build a better future.